anatomy of the internal carotid artery. The internal carotid artery is one of the two terminal branches of the common carotid artery, but it is more direct. It is considered as an upward continuation of the common carotid artery. It supplies structure inside the skull and the orbit. It is the principal artery to supply the brain and the eye. Course of the internal carotid artery. It begins at the upper border of the lamina of the thyroid cartilage. At the level of the disc between C3 and C4 vertebrae and runs upward to reach the base of the skull where it enters the carotid canal in the petreous temporal bone it emerges in the cranial cavity by passing through the upper part of the foramen lacrimum in the cranial cavity it enters the cavernous sinus and it ends below the anterior perforated substance of the brain by dividing into anterior and middle cerebral arteries the course of the internal carotid artery is divided into the following four parts. First part, cervical part in the neck. It ascends vertically upwards from its origin to the base of the skull to reach the lower end of the carotid canal and lies on the front of transverse processes of the upper cervical vertebrae. In the neck, the internal carotid artery is enclosed in the carotid cheese with the internal jugular vein and vagus nerve. The lower part of the artery is superficial and located in the carotid triangle. The upper part is deeply located and lies deep to the posterior bill of the gastric muscle, styloid process with the structure attached to it and the parotid gland. At the upper end, the internal jugular vein lies posterior to the internal carotid artery where the last four cranial nerves, glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory, and hypoglossal cell, lies between the internal jugular vein and internal carotid artery. Branches of the cervical part. In the neck, the internal carotid artery gives no branches. The structures passing between the external and internal carotid arteries are Number one, deep part of the parotid gland. Number two, styloid process. Number three, styloglossus muscle. Number four, stylopharyngeus muscle. Number five, glossopharyngeal nerve. Number six, pharyngeal branch of the vagus nerve. The second part of the internal carotid artery, petreous part. The internal carotid artery enters the petreous part of the temporal bone in a carotid canal. It first runs upward and then turns forward and immediately at the right angle. It emerges at the apex of the petreous temporal bone in the posterior wall of the foramen lacrimum and passes through its upper part to enter the cranial cavity. Branches of the petreous part First branch, carotocotympanic branch to middle ear which anastomose with the anterior and posterior tympanic arteries. Pterygoid branch, small and inconstant, enter the pterygoid canal and anastomosis with the greater palatine artery. The third part of the internal carotid artery, the cavernous part. This part lies within the cavernous sinus. From the foramen lacrimum, the internal carotid artery ascends and enters the cavernous sinus. In the sinus, it passes forward along the side of the cella torsica in the floor and the medial wall of the sinus. Here it lies outside the endothelial lining of the sinus and related to the abducent nerve inferior laterally. In the anterior part of the sinus, the artery ascends and pierces the dural roof of the sinus between the anterior and the middle crinoid processes to reach underneath the cerebrum. Branches of the cavernous part, cavernous branches to the trigeminal ganglion, superior and inferior hypophyseal arteries to the hypophysis cerebri pituitary gland. Fourth part of the internal carotid artery, cerebral part. This part lies at the base of the brain, 
after emerging from the roof of the cavernous sinus. The artery turns backward in the subarachnoid space along the roof of the cavernous sinus and lies below the optic nerve. Finally, it turns upward by the side of the optic chiasma and reaches the anterior peripheral substances of the brain located at the beginning of the stem of lateral sulcus of the cerebral hemisphere. Here it ends by dividing into anterior and medial cerebral arteries. Branches of the cerebral part, number one of thalamic artery, number two anterior choroidal artery, number three posterior communicating artery, number four anterior cerebral artery, number five middle cerebral artery. Summary of branches of the internal cord artery, cervical part no branches, petreous part two branches, carotcotympanic branch, pterygoid branch, cavernous part two branches, cavernous branches, superior and inferior hypophysial arteries, cerebral part five branches, of thalamic artery, anterior choroidal artery, posterior communicating artery, and two terminal branches, anterior cerebral and middle cerebral. Carotid siphon. The U shaped bend formed by the internal carotid artery while passing through and above the cavernous sinus is called the carotid siphon. It probably dampens down the pulsation of the artery. The carotid siphon is an important feature to be seen in the cerebral and geography. Some advanced details about internal carotid artery. There are seven segments in the Bustler classification. Their classification system is used clinically by the neurosurgeon and neurodiagnostic and neurologist and also in the angiographic appearance of the vessels. These segmentations are cervical segment, petreous segment, lacerium segment, cavernous segment, kilinoid segment, ophthalmic segment, communicating or terminal segment. Cervical segment extends from bifurcation of the common carotid to carotid canal located anterior to the jugular foramen. So purely the internal jugular vein and vagus nerve lies laterally. Medially is the pharynx. At the base of the skull, the glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory, and hypoglossal nerves lies between internal carotid artery and internal jugular vein. This part have no branches. Petreous segment from the carotid canal to foramen lacerum within the petreous temporal bone separate from the middle ear by thin blade, surrounded by extensive sympathetic plexus. This segment extends until the foramen lacerium branches, median artery or artery of thyroid canal, and stomosis with the external carotid artery, carotocotympanic artery, supply the middle ear. Lacerium segment, small segment that extends from petreous apex before foramen lacerium, curving upwards toward the cavernous sinus, turns 90% superiorly following extra dural course, covered by trigeminal ganglion, no branches. Cavernous segment, pass from the petrous apex of the dural ring of the anterior colonoid process, surrounded by cavernous sinus, major branches. Meningohypophyseal trunk includes the tentorial basal branch, the tentorial marginal branch, the meningeal branch, the clavius branch, and the inferior hypophyseal artery. Inferior lateral trunk, the capsular branches also comes from the fourth segment, as do the branches from the inferior lateral trunk, namely the branches that supply the trigeminal ganglion the artery of the foramen rotundum and the branches that run with the certain nerves. Clinoid segment between proximal distal dural rings of cavernous sinus, 
in this as the antenna cord artery enters the subarachnoid space near the anterior colonoid processes, no, no important branches unless ophthalmic artery arises within colonoid segment. Ophthalmic segment extends from distal dura rings at superior colonoid to just below the posterior communicating artery origin. Two important branches of thymic artery, superior hypophyseal artery. Communicating segment extends from below posterior communicating to terminal internal carotid bifurcation into anterior cerebral artery, middle cerebral artery, passes between optic oculomotor nervous. Major branches, posterior communicating artery, anterior choroidal artery, anterior and middle cerebral arteries.